Good day, this is Jim Vitale from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is Digital One ET 121. Today we're gonna to discuss the test and measurement equipment used for digital circuits. Well, if you look at the list here, the O-scope, power supply, multimeter, those are pieces of equipment we've already seen and we're gonna be using them almost in the same manner. So the O-scope, again, is a graphical display of voltage waveforms as a function of time. So if we have a O-scope here, what we're gonna see on our screen is going to be a logic digital waveform. And again, when, what does that go from for our TTL logic? It goes from zero volts to plus five volts. So, which leads us right into the discussion of the power supply and our, well, excuse me, our function generators. Okay, so the function generators we use, over here is three selector switches. And on any different function generator, you're gonna have them located wherever. But typically you've got a sine wave function, a square wave function, and a sawtooth wave function. So if we want to generate a digital signal, which one are we gonna use? The square wave. So now, my question to you is, is this a proper, whoops, is this a proper digital signal when it's centered on that axis right there, where it's still five volts peak to peak, but this is negative 2.5 volts, and that's positive 2.5 volts. And the answer is no, it is not. So we need to go ahead and compensate for this. You're either gonna have to add a DC offset of two and a half volts to bring it up to zero to five volts, or use the TTL compatible connection. Right next to it, you'll see TTL compatible. And that's gonna automatically produce that zero to five volt signal. And from our previous discussion, we can go ahead and adjust our period, which frequency, is one over T by using our frequency adjust dial right here. Okay, so that's something peculiar to the function generator. You have to remember that you need to produce a TTL compatible wave, zero to five volts, not five volts peak to peak. Okay, so our power supplies, discussion of the power supplies, as long as we're dealing with function generators, we need to power up our individual fixed function integrated circuits. And how we do that is you could set A to five volts, or you could set B to five volts using those amplitude adjustments for our DC power supply, or you could use this. TTL plus five volts. There's a second output, excuse me, a third output there, which is always five volts DC. So my suggestion, use that output right there to power up your fixed function integrated circuits rather than adjusting A and B because you don't need to spend time with a digital multimeter going ahead and adjusting those. Perfect discussion now for the digital multimeter. So we can use a digital multimeter to test logical values. If we use our multimeter to go ahead and let's say place our black probe and our red probe. And again, where's our black probe hooked up to? Ground. And let's say this is hooked up to the pin of the logics uh, the fixed function integrated circuit that we wish to test. 
and it shows a value of plus 5 volts, we would expect that pin to have a logic value of 1. If, however, it shows a value of 0 volts, we would anticipate it would have a logic value of 0. So a digital multimeter can be used as a means of testing your inputs and outputs for your circuits. There is another device out there called a logic probe, which does this same thing, but substantially faster. So all a logic probe is, it's like a digital multimeter, except it looks like a little pen. Okay, it needs to be charged up, so you, it's going to wire to it. One goes to ground, one goes to plus five, and there's a lights on it. And if it's high, the high light's going to light up, and if it's low, the low light is going to light up. There's a special light too, a little yellow light. And if the yellow light is blinking, it means that particular thing that you are touching is pulsing. It's changing from low to high. That's all a logic probe is. It's like a super quick digital multimeter set up specifically for the logic levels you're looking at. Yes, you could use a digital multimeter, and if it's five, you know it's a high, but why carry around the, all that unnecessary weight of equipment when you've got this handy dandy little pen? So there's something else called a logic pulser. Whereas a logic probe detects the presence of something, a logic pulser provides something. So logic pulser, sometimes they're combined in the same instrument too. Again, looks like a little pen, and it's providing, and you gotta power it up. It provides pulsed waveform. Think of it as a, a like a little mini function generator. And you can use a pulser and a probe on one side, excuse me, pulser on one side and a probe on the other to see what's happening with the output, just to see if you're getting an output. Okay, the final device we're going to discuss here is the logic analyzer. So the logic analyzer, all it is, it's a super oscope. So there are, exist in digital realm certain glitch states. A glitch state is, let's say we're using our oscope here, sometimes our oscopes are not fast enough to go ahead and catch super fast extraneous excursions. Let's say this spike right here, okay, where it is going from zero to five in a regular pattern, but this little extraneous spike is referred to as a glitch. It's a flaw in our logic here and we need to go ahead and do that. That's all a logic analyzer is. Well, there's a number of other functions for a logic analyzer, but just think of it for now as a super oscope. Okay, so this wraps up our discussion for chapter one. We've gone through some basic digital and analog quantities, what we're expecting for our digital values using voltage waveforms. We've discussed digital data waveforms. We've discussed basic logic gates, basic logic functions fixed function integrated circuits, programmable logic. We've wrapped it up with a discussion of test and measurement instruments. Now we're gonna go into chapter two, which deals with some number theory regarding the conversion between decimal and binary.